Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Learn to Speak with Mahesh. So today I wanted to share uh, the best practices and some tips and tricks which I followed uh, when I took five certifications in three days. So it was a little hectic but it was really interesting so I just wanted to share some of the tips uh, and best practices which I followed. So let's get started. So before I get into the stuff, the uh, the certifications which I took, I just wanted to put a, set, uh, a screenshot. I have not got the official email yet uh, because of some confusion with the email ID. So I'm working with the support. So hopefully I should get the official email. But I have taken the screenshot from Criteria and you can see my name. So the first certification which I took was uh, Network Engineer and it was taken on uh, 21st. IST time Indian standard time but uh, it was at around 10 30 I took the exam so uh, which was still like late night for in the US so that's the reason it shows us 20th of December so it is actually 21st of December so the next certification was a digital leader so which was basically taken on um, 21st which is actually 22nd uh, on paper if you see it so this is the second one so on the same day 15 minutes gap I took then I went and took basically uh, the cloud architect one so after cloud architect uh, security engineer and lastly uh, associate cloud engineer so this is what I took so the five certifications which I took so um, now some of the tips and are uh, uh, best practice which I follow I wanted to share it with you so first and foremost thing uh, the network engineer certification which I took was the the toughest certification uh, the one which I have taken till now so I have taken it twice uh, so uh, the first one which I took basically expired I did not renew it I forgot to renew it I did not get a notification because of which I forgot to renew it so I took it uh, this time it was so difficult folks every question was difficult so uh, most of the time when i take an exam i will have at least some time to review the stuff so this exam i did not had anything time so i went till the third minute to answer the questions so it was very difficult so i would say um, if you want to prepare for network engineer uh, so the tip which i shared yesterday go to the exam guide section of network engineer each and every bullet point you should be able to talk for at least two to three minutes and you should be able to do some good amount of uh, commands you should be knowing good amount of commands uh, especially kubernetes uh, stuff with respect to the cider ranges uh, when you create it that's very very important so something which you need to uh, prepare for that uh, digital leader was one of the easiest one i would say so easy it was a 90 minute uh, exam so all other exams are 120 but digital leader is basically 90 minutes uh, believe it or not in uh, 45 minutes i was able to finish everything um, i did not want to come out of the exam uh, usually because uh, I do training so I wanted to know the pattern what kind of stuffs they give all those things so I reviewed all the uh, 50 questions um, once again um, what I got as a feel was it was like something like a mini cloud architect kind of an exam uh, is what I would say then the net uh, security engineer is the one which I took basically uh, this I would call it as a mini network engineer certification so and a small recommendation if you want to take a security engineer you have to also not only focus on the security aspect of it but a good amount of networking folks so uh, the pattern which I have always followed is first take network engineer then security engineer so it becomes a little easy uh, like for example if you prepare for cloud architect digital leader is very easy you can go without preparing so I literally went without preparing so I had prepared for cloud architect uh, so I basically took this so similarly uh, network engineer I had taken I had spent at least a couple of days uh, because of the tight schedule which I had prepared for it first day was network engineer second day was uh, security engineer so it was easy and I was able to see good amount of networking questions there uh, that's what I would say and I have seen people taking the reverse format uh, they were not successful is what I have heard from them uh, like uh, taking security engineer in the beginning they were not able to clear it so network engineer is a good choice it's a recommendation it's not that it's mandatory that you have to do it um, if you want to directly take security engineer 
spend a good amount of time uh, on security uh, on networking is what i would say cloud architect uh, one of my favorite certification so this was a recertification so i have not got a uh, official uh, email yet but i will show you the link which basically i had bookmarked so where you can see it is like continuous six years let me just show you that uh, this is my cloud architect because this is an existing one so all the remaining four were new so i don't have a link so this link basically it is in my email so you can see it uh, 30th december 2024 so 2022 it was expiring so it got uh, extended now i can show it like six years uh, by the end of 2024 so I can officially show that I have six years experience in Google Cloud. So that's the benefit of uh, renewing it continuously. So coming back to Cloud Architect, uh, there are four case studies. Uh, so first question itself was a case study question, folks. Back to back 12 questions was case studies. So it was easy uh, is what I felt. I'm also planning to create a few more videos on the case study. So do keep... Uh, looking into my channel so you should be able to get some uh, tips and tricks on the case studies again um, so the first four is two-year validity exams so the last one is an associate cloud engineer uh, so recently i guess from october 2022 google made it as three years validity so which is really good so you can keep it for a long time there so that's a value add uh, with respect to the complexity of it uh, because of uh, having uh, that was the last exam which i took folks that was the last exam so uh, among all the one which was the most important thing for me was uh, cloud architect because i had to retain that certification right it was like lots of pressure uh, internally for me also like i have to clear it uh, um, I had spent a good amount of time because I had to retain it. So all other thing was first time taking it. So it's not that I took it easy, but uh, pressure wise, I would say cloud architect was there. So I wanted to do little, have to have a relaxed one towards the end. So I took cl associate cloud engineer. Again, uh, I was able to finish it by one hour uh, because I uh, planning to take some trainings on this kind of uh, cloud architect uh, associate cloud engineer so i went through all the questions once again so that i know what kind of stuffs they ask uh, really some good number of g cloud commands uh, kubernetes comma related concepts were tested heavily so it was really interesting one is what i would say so those are some of the tips folks like the toughest one was basically this one so if you want to start looking for a certification uh, little lightweight uh, non-technical mix of non-technical technical kind of stuff digital leader is a good choice uh, but i would say prepare for cloud architect and then digital leader would be easy and you should be definitely able to clear also cloud architect also cloud architect with digital leader is like a good combination i would say like uh, senior people and also you talk with business so that's a combination which you can get but if you want to get a complete hands-on kind of a stuff i would say associate cloud engineer is also a good certification okay so those were some of the tips uh moving on to the next one uh some best practices which i followed uh, uh, before i go to the first bullet point let me just go to the official page so these are some of the uh, official links of associate cloud engineer network engineer uh, and digital leader i've just taken randomly three of them the reason is uh, off late google started mentioning explicitly the uh, exam format 50 questions to 60 questions multiple choice multiple select 50 to 60 folks i have uh, heard people they have got 60 questions okay so similarly if you go to network engineer again the same thing digital leader which is only 90 minutes uh, exam but 50 to 60 is what they mentioned. So like this for every uh, exam, they have mentioned the pattern is maximum 60, minimum is 50 questions. Now what's the tip here I wanted to share? Uh, because it's totally random. You don't know whether you are going to get 50 questions or 60 questions. For me, all the five exams which I got, uh, to be very frank, I got 50 questions. Now, how I was able to plan it according because the duration is fixed. 
right except uh, digital leader which is 90 minutes uh, remaining all are 120 minutes now you have to plan it folks the worst case is somebody gets a 60 question so finishing it in 120 minutes you have to be like super fast there at least two two minutes is what you can spend maximum on each question so there could be easy questions where it will just take you a few seconds to it but you have to be on your toes is what i would say uh, so how can you plan it accordingly on the first question itself you will be able to see this one of 50 so the, I used to first focus on that. So first few uh, screens would be like accepting the terms of the services, checking your name, blah, 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 all those kind of stuff. When you click on start, the first question you should be looking at, is it one of 50 or one of 55, one of 60? Unfortunately or fortunately, I got everything was 50 questions. So, uh, but as I mentioned, I have seen in LinkedIn, I have seen people saying they got 60 questions. So it is not a myth. There is possibility of you getting it uh, do let me know in the comment section if you have cleared some question or taken some exams and how many questions you got it so I got 50 now if it is 60 folks please you have to be on your toes you have to do it little faster otherwise you will run out of time you will be not able to cover all the stuffs okay so that is the first tip which I want or the best practice which I followed uh, second thing is which is really important uh, I would say you may see a question. Unfortunately, you're not able to see any possible answer. You will say, you cannot say that, okay, I'll come back later. No, that is not possible. You have to mark A, B, C, D. One of them, you have to mark it. Please mark review for later and then proceed. If you're not sure, because you would have spent some time, right? Two minutes, you would have spent maximum, assume. Don't just go and you cannot go simply. It will not allow you to go. So you have to mark one. And if you are doubtful, use the uh, at the bottom right hand, something like in this location, you'll see the, the bot, uh, bottom left hand corner. You will see review for later. Just check that box towards the end. You will see a screen where you will know, OK, these are the questions which is marked for review. You can go click on that uh, question number and you will be able to review it again. So do that one. That's one important stuff. And my suggestion, basically, uh, only when you make mistakes, you'll know that. So what I would suggest is don't take exams like the one which I took back to back. I had to basically because uh, year end, uh, I had little time. Uh, so the entire year was little packed. So it what I had planned it for November itself, the exams, but it got pushed, pushed towards the end. So I had to do, take back to back. Please don't take this as my approach. The only reason is it becomes so difficult uh, to manage it. Um, literally, right? Um, I did not have proper sleep. Uh, so because of which, believe me or not, uh, I had a, had I was yawning throughout the exam. So was feeling like whether I'm in a dreamland uh, or whether I'm taking exam. I literally also felt like I took some naps is my understanding folks. So it was very difficult. And uh, fortunately I had taken in the exam center. That is okay. Uh, what if you have taken the stuff in basically uh, in home where there's a online, uh, sorry, remote proctored. So because there's a camera in front of you, so what will the person think this person is taking exam or sleeping, right? So if you take in the center, uh, you will not have a web camera in front of you is my understanding. Uh, you will have a CCTV camera above it. So that way people will not see your, your yawning, uh, your sleeping, so all those things. But proper sleep is important. I Mine was an exceptional case because I had to finish it uh, because of the commitment. So, but please don't take that one day after that's okay is one understanding. So uh, please do those things. So those were some of the best practices which I followed and some tips which I wanted to share more on this as I proceed further I'll share some few of them a uh, few of them I'll make it publicly available few of them I'll make it as uh, members only so if you are a member you'll be able to see it also so that's the video which I wanted to share today thank you for watching